Hey, good morning, YouTube. Watts, amps, AC, DC, how do I make sense of all that? I've had a few questions from viewers about how to size components for inverter and off-grid power systems. I'll split this reply up into a couple of segments to cover the basic components in an off-grid power system. This power system might be a vehicle with an alternator and inverter, or a solar or wind power system with battery backup and an inverter. There are many excellent articles online with detailed calculations for sizing solar, wind, and inverter power systems. If you're designing a fully off-grid system that needs to be up in any weather, then by all means go through the detailed calculations. But if you're putting together your first system and just want to know where to start, there's an easier way. This isn't a hard and fast equation to follow, just some easy to use rules of thumb to keep components of your system somewhat balanced. And there's no one place to start. Pick something you know and work out from there. So, as an example, let's say I have an AC load that I want to run off DC power. So I need an inverter to produce AC power from DC power. In this case, I have a trip light sine wave inverter charger. This is a 12 volt DC input and a 1000 watt AC output inverter. And there are other inverters. There's modified sine waves and uh, you can get larger ones. You can get smaller ones. Uh, I really won't go into that in much detail, but this is what I have. So this is what I'll show. For these examples, I'll assume 12 volts DC and 120 volts AC as my working voltages. Why? It keeps the mass simple. 12 times 10 equals 120. Now inverters aren't 100% efficient, so as a rule of thumb, take your AC watts and divide by 10 to get DC amps needed by the inverter. So you can see my 115 watt uh, blower motor load needs about 11.5 amps DC current to power the inverter to produce this 115 watts of output power. Sure, some inverters may need less, others more, but divide by 10 is a good rule of thumb and is easy to calculate in your head. So why do this conversion? Typically, AC loads are rated in watts, like a 100 watt light bulb, and AC energy is recorded in watt hours or kilowatt hours, like your power bill. DC devices are often rated in amps or amp hours. So keep your AC numbers in watts and watt hours, and DC numbers in amps and amp hours, and just shift the decimal place to switch between the two. For example, one kilowatt hour equals 1,000 watt hours or 100 amp hours of 12 volt DC power to the inverter to produce that one kilowatt hour. You'll notice that the DC energy is 12 times 100 or 1,200 watt hours compared to 1,000 watt hours of AC energy. That 200 watt hour difference is the loss in the inverter and the wiring you incur using the DC inverter. Now, if you're designing an inverter power system for a vehicle to run off the alternator, this is all you really need to know. For example, you have a 1000 watt AC load that will need 100 amps of 12 volt DC current. So you'll need an alternator that can output at least 100 amps to power the inverter without draining your battery. You'll likely want something larger than that to power the rest of the vehicle and not overload the alternator. Now as far as the inverter size, you'll want the inverter rating to be larger than the devices you plan to power. How much larger depends somewhat on the load. If it has a motor or a high startup current, you might want a much larger inverter. Larger inverters cost more. They are larger in size and they, can, they might consume more power at lower loads than a smaller inverter. You can find lots of good web pages that go into how various inverters perform 
check out Neuralnar's channel in the sidebar on the right for some good reviews. In the next segment, I'll go into what to do when you have a battery bank to pull power out of instead of an alternator or generator. So stay tuned for that video, and in the meantime, you can subscribe to the channel to get updates. And as always, thanks for watching.